Greetings, students from all over the country. Uh, I'm Ms. S. Mamolian. I'll be taking you for tourism and the environment for the higher diploma students. Um, we'll start by looking at uh, some examination tips just to help you as you are nearing towards the examinations. Uh, first and foremost, I would want you to um, start um, adequately. You need to read, uh, make use of textbooks. Don't just rely on the internet, because on the internet some of the information is not so academic. Uh, so acquaint yourself with the concepts, with the information. And as you get into the examination room, uh, always read carefully the question. Take your time. Give yourself minutes to read the question. And it's always good to underline the keywords. Uh, for example, here, uh, I've got a question here, show how tourism and environment are related. So you need to underline the keywords, show how, and then tourism, that's your keyword. Environment, that's your keyword, related. So as you are writing, you need to ask yourself, am I showing how tourism and environment are related? And it's always good to have your, a plan of your answer. This is an, a, a, an attack. So you should have a plan. How are you going to introduce yourself? How are you going to present your main points? How are you going to have your conclusion? And at this age, stage, you need to give examples. You need to give statistics to illustrate your answer. Give examples from Namibia. Give examples from Africa. Give examples from all over the world. And make sure that your answer is adequate. Don't just write a paragraph and expect to get some miracle uh, uh, performance. You need to give adequate um, um, answers to your examination. Then we move on to our major topics of this subject. Uh, first and foremost, you need to know the relationship between tourism and environment, the impacts, sustainable tourism principles, and the strategies to reduce impacts on our environment, and also the role of the government in sustainable tourism. And there is a theory on host guest relation, which explains what happens when tourists meet the host community. Um, this is now a, a definition that is now at your fingertips, I'm sure, of tourism. These are activities. Tourism are activities that are undertaken by people after they've moved from their homes to um, those unusual environments. And it has to be within tw after 24 hours and less than 24 months for it to be called tourism. And various the activities which they undertake, are, they vary from sporting, uh, adventure, and so forth. And then we need to understand the environment. Tourism does not operate in isolation. It operates in an environment. Environment, in simple terms, is our surrounding. So when you look at the environment of tourism, we are looking at both the natural environment, which involves the landscapes, the vegetation, the wildlife, the people, the climate. And we also have the built-in the built in environment, which is created by humans. And this involves buildings, roads, sewage, the tourism superstructure, which are hotels, lodges, and uh, conference centers that makes up our environment. So what is the relationship between tourism and environment? Uh, tourism, whether natural, as I have explained, or artificial, is the most important uh, aspect of the tourism product. You cannot have tourism without the environment. Tourism happens within the environment, be it natural, be it artificial. So as soon as you open your area to tourism, you are more likely to have um, impacts, to, to have modification of your environment, to have um, changes to your environment because of these tourism activities. So that's where they uh, relate tourism and environment. Tourism cannot operate in isolation or outside the environment. And once that happens, we are likely to have impacts on the environment. And these impacts can be uh, positive, they can also be negative. However, we try to reduce the negative impacts and increase the um, positive impacts. So you have uh, impacts on your flora, which is the vegetation, and also on your uh, fauna, which is the uh, anim uh, animal, uh, it refers to the animals or wildlife. So we can have changes to the vegetation cover, we can have changes to the breeding patterns, we can have changes to the animals. Nowadays, the animal population is decreasing, especially through the killing, which is uh, normally referred to trophy hunting, um, 
where the tourists, they pay, and then they kill the animal, and then this reduces the number of animals in an uh, a, a, a environment. So we have it changes, especially to this, because this makes up a greater part of our environment, the vegetation and the animals. Then another major impact is pollution, and it comes in three categories, water pollution, air pollution, and noise pollution. And especially air pollution is creating a lot of uh, disastrous effects. And we have had the problem of climate change. And especially when you look at air transport, the, those huge aircrafts, they emit a lot of dangerous gases. And this is destroying our ozone layers. That's why some areas are now receiving more rainfall. They are resulting in flooding. Some areas are getting drier and drier. We also have the melting of the snow. Uh, of ice, and this causes a lot of uh, problems. So definitely tourism is resulting in a lot of uh, negative impacts, erosion to the riverbanks, to the soil, the soil fertility is um, at danger. We also have destruction of sandy dunes. We have, for example, this June 7 in Orvish Bay. The height definitely has actually been reduced because of tourism activities. We have got several of these uh, uh, impacts on the ground and surface water supplies, some areas are getting drier and so forth. We also have um, the changes to the environment, buildings are coming in. We also have littering, especially when you look at Mount Everest, the base camp, where before the tourists, they climb, they stay, they litter around, uh, and this causes um, not so good uh, to the um, our eyesight. We also have um, where the, we used to have forests, where we used to have vegetation, water surfaces, they've been removed and clear way for infrastructure, for hotels, for roads, for sea walls. So there's a lot of changes that are happening on our environment. We also have in some areas where people used to stay, they've been moved to pave way for hotel establishments. So most houses in urban areas where tourists are coming, for example in Windhoek, in Swakopmund, they've been changed to guest houses. They've been changed to conference centers. So this um, shows um, how tourism is impacting on the environment. However, um, the impacts are not only positive. We also, they are not only negative, we also have positive. Where some ancient uh, monuments, some sites, they are actually being preserved. Like, for example, the pyramids of Egypt. We also have the Great Wall of China. So measures have been put to protect these uh, monuments. So in a... A, a much uh, more lighter way they've been preserved, they've been restored. Then creation of national parks, it's a very good idea where the wildlife is pre preserved, it's kept, it's um, under control, it's managed well. So we also have some positive uh, issues coming in, the protection of reefs and beaches, the maintenance of forests, especially in protected areas. Um, what is advised nowadays is the uh, process of environmental impact assessment. This is a process which enables researchers to predict what consequences are likely to happen on the environment after the tourism activity has been introduced. So all countries that are introducing tourism, any destinations that are being opened, an EIA should be done so that you see, you foresee what kind of impacts are likely to happen. If they are too much, if they are great, then you have to stop the projects. But if they are minimal, then you can go ahead with um, the project. So environmental impact assessment is very, very important. It's unfortunate that at times governments, they rush just to open destination for tourists without first doing the EIS. And this leads to disastrous um, impacts. And this is the process of EIA, where you need to audit first, what is there? What are the resources which are there? How fragile are they? Uh, what can be done? What environmental problems are likely to okay if tourists come in? What are the possible effects on people, on flora, on fauna, on soil, on water? This is an important um, uh, process where you need to look before you start. You need to assess what are the likely effects so that you don't destroy your environment. We have had so many sites, so many destinations that now they don't receive any tourists because all the environment has been destroyed. And then there's this major aspect of sustainable tourism, which is, our, which is in our subject, which is in our course. It's called sustainable tourism. What is it? This is when you practice tourism, when you are satisfying the present tourist, but also with the future in mind. You are making sure that you don't destroy the environment. The tourists for today, they're satisfied. They don't destroy the environment. You also keep 
for the needs of the future generation. So all tourism should be sustainable, be it beach tourism, urban tourism, rural tourism, um, um, adventure tourism, it should be sustainable. You need to get uh, maximum benefits and at the same time uh, resulting in less uh, negative uh, impacts to the environment. And one of the major ways, or one of the major types of tourism which is very sustainable is ecotourism. It's when you've got um, relatively fewer tourists, you only encourage fewer groups to visit uh, natural areas and they interact with the host community. They even help in developing uh, or improving its environment. So it's actually a responsible travel to natural areas which promotes environment and sustains the well-being of the local economy. So in ecotourism, the local communities should benefit more in the tourism. And this will encourage them to participate more in its preservation and also its conservation. So ecotourism is one way of sustainable tourism. So sustainable tourism is not a type of tourism. It should be the norm, the way you should handle your tourism. All tourism should be sustainable. You should not destroy the environment. Um, so to ecotourism can be perceived to be a subcomponent of sustainable tourism. Sustainable tourism should be the lifestyle of all tourism uh, categories. Then how do we come up with this sustainable tourism in a destination? There are several principles. You need to take a holistic view. Don't just look at tourism. Look at developed tourism in relation to other sectors of the economy, mining, uh, agriculture, forestry. So it should be a holistic. It, tourism should not happen in isolation. Otherwise, other sectors of the economy end up suffering. You should also involve all stakeholders, um, especially the local communities. They are the custodians of the environment. So involve them in your development of tourism. And sustainable tourism, one of the major principles is you should look at long-term um, uh, approaches. Don't just look at short term. What are you benefiting in the short term? Look at the long term, long term in the long run, right? And the actions should be self-sustaining. And also uh, address both global and local impacts. Don't just look at the impacts of the destination uh, in isolation. Uh, then we also have sustainable consumption. You also need to look at the tourists. They should consume the product in a sustainable way. You should also manage their behaviors. If there are behaviors which are not so good and really behaviors, you should also manage them. And you should try to equate sustainability and also quality. So do not simply concentrate on visitor satisfaction. Also look at the needs of the locals. Are they also getting value for their uh, environment? Then there is another important aspect of um, the principle of sustainable tourism. It is the polluter pay. Here we are saying tourists should pay for the damages which they are contributing to an environment. It can be through the environmental tax, it can be through the entrance fees, but they should contribute something to the maintenance, to the preservation, and also try to do a risk management to the environment so that you don't uh, destroy a lot of your resources. And you need to look at, um, to limit, to have, um, uh, to, to respect um, limits the readiness and availability ability to limit the amount of tourism development or the volume of tourist flows. So do not be controlled by the tourists who are coming from outside. You should have limits. If they come in terms of permits, in terms of visas, in terms of uh, entrance fees, you have to uh, manage that and make sure that you stick to your controls. If in a destination you're supposed to receive only 10 tourists per day, you have to uh, stick to that. Then. Tourism is sensitive to external conditions uh, in terms of its performance and the level of its impact. We also have global threats such as climate change and terrorism. They need to be considered in your planning. And uh, as I have said, you need to do risk management. And other, um, another important thing is uh, the role of the government, the role of the private sector. Uh, governments are responsible for the sustainable development of tourism. Uh, they should come in in terms of land use planning, they should do demarcate zones for tourism, for mining, for agriculture. They should also come in with environmental regulations. They should provide the necessary infrastructure. They should do the marketing and information uh, services. So in a way, 
the government should take responsibility of the environment. Of course, most of the tourism industries are governed or are managed by private sector, but the government should be the sole um, uh, responsible uh, institution for the environment. So they should come in with policies uh, that also governs the operations of the private sector. And one way in which the government can make their job easier is to create PPPs. These are public-private partnerships where they work together with the private partnership in managing the environment. Uh, we have spoken a lot about the environment uh, impacts, so it is necessary for us to look at the strategies. And you'll be working for the Minister of Environment, you're going to be working for uh, conservation agencies. You need to know what strategies should be put in place to reduce these negative um, impacts. Um, there are several strategies. You can control the number of visitors. You can also modify visitor behaviors if they've got unruly behaviors. Uh, you need to tell them the do's and don'ts in your particular destination. You also need to give them information. You also need to try and um, spread the visitors throughout the year. Don't allow them to come at one place and then they create an influx in a destination. Uh, once they do that, we also have more uh, negative impacts and it should be very difficult to control if they come in large numbers at one time. So you need to spread them. And then use of signs, tourism, uh, tourist information centers to give them information, use of contact, codes of conduct. Code of conduct, it refers to what are you supposed to be do, to do and not to do, the housekeeping rules. And there should be wardens in the destinations. The, if it's a national park, if it's a um, game reserve, there should be wardens. There should be tourist guides. There should be guards who are looking, up, watching over. And if it means they have to say, you don't do this, they have to, to do it. And in some areas, you can actually put um, uh, cameras so that you monitor the behavior of the, of the tourists and also prevent such things as theft and also deliberate damage to the environment. Also, it is important to restrict the use of site for regrowth. If you see that this destination has been overused, you can close it, close it to the uh, outside uh, visitors and then you'll give it time to regrow. And you can have protective measures such as, such as reinforcements, footpath. You have um, footpath where tourists are allowed to, they can walk, they're not supposed to go into, the, uh, to, into much of the uh, areas. So have protective measures in place. And you can have limits to vehicles, to speedboats, so that you prevent things like erosion. You can put in entrance fees for both locals and uh, international tourists so that you try and reduce uh, much access to especially uh, fragile environments. This works quite a lot. So these are some of the strategies that you can use to try and um, reduce negative impacts to the environment. Um, we also have um, a theory, uh, Dox Iridex theory, which explains what happens when tourists come to a destination. There is usually a relationship that develops. So he explains it in four stages. The first stage is euphoria. Tourists are starting to come in. They are fewer in numbers. The host communities are welcoming them. They know they are creating jobs, the investment, they are getting an income. So they welcome them with open arms. And then the tourists, they go back home. They tell their friends and relatives about the good destination. They come now in large numbers. So once they come in large numbers, the host community is happy. They set up uh, some um, shops. Uh, they're getting an income. Everything is going well. And they are now used to the, to the guests, to the tourists. But as they increase, start increasing in numbers, the tourists can actually take the space for the host community. That's where the problem is. So the host community can feel, start feeling irritated because they can no longer go to their restaurants freely or they're not treated very well. Uh, more preference is given to the tourists. Um, the cultures can also, they can, they, they can also clash now uh, because the tourists are bringing in, maybe they are walking in with clothes which are not so uh, acceptable in that cultural area. So this can actually create what is called irritation and it leads to antagonism where tourists and the host community can actually have frictions. And we have seen some sites, like there's a site in Mozambique, Pemba, where there are now more tourists than the local people. And even prices in the shops, prices in the restaurant, they rose, there was inflation. The local community could not afford to buy products in their area. So this created a lot of um, 
problems and it can lead to the issues like xenophobia, it can lead to issues like racialism and in the end they can clash, they can even fight and you can have an increase in theft, um, mugging of the tourists. So this theory helps us to understand that when tourists come to an area, it's not all rosy. In the initial stages, it's okay. But as they increase in numbers, it can actually create um, a lot of um, irritation. And this may lead to problems such as the coping of behavior. We've got a demonstration effect, the coping of behaviors by the locals or the tourists or vice versa of the good things and the bad things. We also have a culturation where local people adapt to the values and habits of the, of the visitors. In your rural area, you might start seeing uh, young girls, they walk um, in uh, shorts or dresses which are not so um, acceptable in the community. It's because they'll be coping from the tourists who are coming in. So such kind of effects can um, uh, result. Cultural shock, where we have uh, some behaviors which are copied in, which are not so acceptable, which are ineffective. So this can actually create a lot of problems. So this theory helps us to explain, especially the uh, reactions that happens when the guests come into a host community. Uh, it may result in very uh, uh, difficult situation. We also have stage the authenticity, where the tourists, they want to experience the culture, um, but they also want to mix in what they are being presented with their own. So in the end, the locals, they end up presenting them with a culture which is mixed, their own and the tourist, and this won't be really authentic. So we end up having loss of our real, of the, the worst communities, the real culture in the dances and the, and the rituals, because they are mended to what the tourists want in this in the end may result in the culture of the host community being diluted. So a lot of things happen when the tourists meet the host com community. It cannot remain undiluted. There's some dilution that takes place. So this may not be very well, especially when we look at the preservation of our cultures and uh, so forth. So in short, this is what is in this uh, subject, the tourism and environment. Tourism, the major uh, important factors is tourism operates in an environment. In this environment, it's natural and it is also artificial. It is also man-made. And when tourists come in, they are leaving their homes. They come in and usually they come in in groups. They come in as families. So as they arrive in a destination, they are sort of putting a pressure on the environment. Let us just look by just going to a game reserve. Uh, they are trembling on the vegetation, they are trembling on the small animals, they destroy the ecosystem. So there is likely to be some negative effects resulting from the influx of tourists into an environment. And what we are saying is, as governments, as the local community, we need to control our environment. In as much as we gain from tourism, we need also to protect our environment. Like now we have an argument between environmentalists and economists. Environmentalists, they're actually arguing that tourism is creating a lot of impact on the environment. Uh, while the economists are saying we are gaining a lot of uh, benefits, uh, income and employment generation from the tourists. So we should be listened here. Uh, all of them, they are right, but we should do, try and minimize the um, uh, minimize the environmental impacts and at the same time increase the economic benefits. Many countries, for example Namibia, they are gaining quite a lot from tourism, especially international tourism. Many tourists are coming from Germany, they are coming from Italy, they are coming from South Africa and when they come in, they bring in um, foreign currents, they need accommodation, so it means hotels are being built, employment is being uh, created. So benefits are there. But as a nation, we need to come in with measures to try and balance so that the tourism that not does not become detrimental to the environment. And as I have spoken about sustainable tourism, we should aim for sustainable tourism, where we are meeting the needs of the present tourists, the needs of the present uh, local communities. But at the same time, we also need to preserve the environment for the future generation and try and reduce problems such as climate change and so forth. So, in short, this is a very interesting um, 
uh, subject and this is the reality and we should not be blind we should not just look at the short term effects of the uh, tourism we should look at it in the long term uh, and where you see your environment is so delicate don't open it to tourism just go for those areas which are a bit more resistant to changes so that you also keep your environment for future um, generation so in short this is uh, tourism and the environment uh, go through your textbooks, get magazines from the Ministry of Environment and Tourism, get magazines from Namibia Tourism Board, read, go through, also read what other countries are doing uh, in terms of conserving the environment, how are they managing uh, their environment for the benefit of the present and the future generation. And if you have got any questions, I'm always free, you can email me your questions and you can discuss on the emails Otherwise, I wish you well in this tourism and environment subject, and I wish you well in the examinations that will be coming in the near um, uh, months to come.